Hello Taurus, and welcome to your mid-May tarot reading for what is blocking you and your person. <clears throat> You'll have to excuse uh, if you uh, check in with any other videos for your sun, moon, and rising. You're going to be a little bit eclectic this time because I'm doing kind of a new format. So what we're going to start with is my shamanic medicine deck, and we're going to look at what is the current theme going on between you and your person. Thank you, Spirit, for two cards. Oh, immediately. <laughs> First, great mystery. Love that card. One more card for Taurus, please. For the theme between them and their person's connection right now. One more card, please. One more card, please. Oh, all right. Fire, passion one I haven't quite seen yet. And on the bottom, Sea Creatures, Immersion. So, I've actually had these cards for a while, but they're, they're a little bit different, so I still like to read from the book. But just off the bat, I mean, great mystery for one. You know, we're talking about the universe here, and the underlying word there is trust. So, right now, there's a lot of solar plexus stuff going on that needs to be healed between you guys and that already is healed and you see that that butterfly is already a butterfly so it feels to me like you are on the other side of the metamorphosis with your person both you and your person are going through that and i'll read from the book in just a second on that fire passion right this tells me whether or not you're in communication with your person that the both of you are thinking about each other you're both Missing that physical connection, that mental connection. This is very, it's funny with both of these, I'd suggest this is very Leo energy, but th this one in itself is very much Aries energy. Either way, there's quite a lot of light and illumination going on between the two of you, Taurus. Now well, let's look at what the book has to say for a great mystery. It's EFG. There we go. Great mystery. Great mystery is a universal energy that permeates through all things. It is the beginning and the end. It is present in all beings. Great mystery is also referred to as creator. It is everything come together as one. A lack of self-belief separates you from the oneness of the universe. Acknowledge the part you are here to play and accept your life purpose. Everything is in perfect order and working out as it should. Daily prayer and meditation build trust. Great Mystery Speaks, Father Sky and Mother Earth, Divine Power and de Death and re <laughs> Divine Power of Death and Birth, Embrace the Life in All You See, Trust in the Great Mystery. So, if you are not already giving your complete trust and faith to the universe, now is the time to do so, and this is what your person is also either doing or being called to do. Let's look at Fire. All right. Prometheus stole fire from the gods on Mount Olympus and gave it to mankind to ensure their survival. Hercules believed water and fire made the soul and likened enlightenment with becoming pure fire. Pyromancy, divination by fire, was practiced at the Temple of Athena. Fire deities existed throughout the world and include Kali, Astarte, and Pele. Celtic fire festivals such as Beltane honor the transformative power of fire. A fear of fire stems from a past life. A cold approach is attracting obstacles. Offer warmth to others to brighten your inner world. A renewed passion invokes the love you have been waiting for. The element of fire holds the strength you require. Fire speaks. Call upon the spirit of fire. Invoke new courage and all you desire. My force will ravage fears and plight. Ignite the flame of passion tonight. So that could also uh, be suggesting that it is a good time to harness your tantric energy and focus it on that what you really desire. Now because we reflect each other, I'd suggest that this is, uh, intuitively it feels like this is you two calling each other in. And in order for that to happen, trust in the great spirit, great mystery, source, whatever you want to call them. Them, it. <laughs> they, <laughs> whatever. 
I'm going to use the Barbara Walker deck next because it's got a bit of a shadowy theme. And I'm going to pull three to four cards uh, that will show us what is blocking your connection with your person. Thank you, Spirit. Three to four cards on what is blocking Taurus and their person's connection. Thank you. Two more cards, please. Two more cards, please. All right. Mm. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Five of Pentacles. Hardship. Somebody is feeling left out in the cold a little bit here. So, first of all, we have the Ten of Pentacles. Protection. Interesting. Ten of Pentacles is typically about home and marriage, tradition, and the ending of cycles that have to do with materialism and finances. We also have Temperance here. Healing. Balance creativity, play, music, Sagittarius. We also have Yama, the king of swords, in reverse. Boundaries, sharp words, usually um, a masculine type figure that, while in upright, they're using logic in a good way, but they can still very much be using far more logic than they need and not enough emotion. In reverse, I consider that the narcissist card. And fate, the three of wands. In the typical decks, this is usually uh, joyfulness and reunion, and it is still it can still be considered similarly. But considering the layout of these cards and the imagery used in these, and because we're looking at the shadows that are blocking your connection, I'm going to suggest that. This is likely more to do with a third-party situation, but it is on the end of the cards that come out, so that suggests to me that that is coming towards an ending, or will soon. Now, with the Ten of Pentacles in reverse, that suggests to me, Taurus, that there is a blockage on both sides, you and your person. Um, there are holdups with money, there are issues with house, home, hearth, and issues with commitment. So it could be that you or your person have a bit of a commitment phobia going on right now. And it's being healed. This uh, The temperance card is oftentimes spirit taking your cups. There's two cups in it. Spirit is holding on to your cup and their cup until you figure out this other stuff. So it's kind of a divine timing thing, and it's also a universal timeout, so to speak, which is usually represented by the hangman card, which I don't see in here, but because of these cards, this is telling me that a lot of this is divine timing, and it's temperance is also about patience. Just trust. Trust in the great spirit. Trust in, mis trust in the universe. What you want is coming to you. But it's looking like you need to work on your pentacle situation, financial situation, home situation, your body as a temple. As, and because this is the king, I'm, I'm getting the sense that right now your person is very much caught up in a covert narcissist type energy in their ego. They're feeling like a victim. They're feeling like nothing is going right for them. They are feeling the hurt of these pentacles. They're likely facing the consequences of whatever karmic situations or karmic third-party situations that they got involved in. And rather than trusting in spirit and going towards what they're passionate about, not just you, but what they're passionate about in life, they are feeling it. They're feeling it. And the universe is holding their cup. It's withholding their cup. And it is creating more and more difficulties because the truth is they asked for healing. But they're not accepting it. And it's very likely, too, that they could be, in the sense of giving it up to spirit, they could be saying, uh, you know, those who are meant for me will stick around and I'll just give this to God's source spirit and we'll see what happens. Uh, but they, they're using that to a detriment. Like, yes, we want to do that. However, we still need to do the work. We, you know, if we don't change our mindsets, the spirit can bring us all sorts of people that won't stick around or that will end up changing themselves if we're stuck. 
in this victim place. We're stuck in this vision of grandiosity that isn't very likely with how we are. Like, you know, we can have epic romances. We can have great jobs and great homes and and wonderful health and all the toys and fun adventures that we want, but not if we are in an energy of pitying ourselves, of feeling like we are victims. Uh, and it is likely that if your person is in this energy that you are likely feeling either the same energy or feeling when you're feeling victimized by this person not, not maybe not enough appreciation enough affection enough passion and fire in your connection it, either way you guys reflect each other so look into that Taurus because this connection is faded but there are lessons that still need to be learned and right now the focus your first focus should be on you being good with you without anybody else your person is also learning this lesson, but remember that the best way to help heal your connection is to heal yourself. As you heal, they will heal. So you work on this within your environment, with just you. Don't focus so much on them. If you're feeling passionate, yeah, you know, write them some love notes or make them a little video that they can see at another time and just get it out of you and then go back to focusing on your career, your home, your family, your you. All right, Taurus. So next one I'm going to pull out our... I've got my Wonderland deck, and we're going to pull out some advice for what you can focus on, like a little more detail on this to help you unblock this blockage. Thank you, Spirit. Three to four cards for Taurus. How they can unblock these blockages. One with the Eight of Wands. Thank you for two to three more cards. Good. That one, ooh, Empress in reverse. This one wants to pop out. Let's see if we can get one more. One more for Taurus, please. Unblock these blockages between them and their person. And the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> Isn't that interesting that it ended up right under the fates, too? And on the bottom... Oh, this was the Nine of Wands. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Eight of Wands. Which, actually, in this deck is really interesting as, um... It's about learning to be playful and not so guarded. Uh, which is kind of fitting, because the Nine of Wands is that wounded warrior... The, the I'm sorry, the the wounded healer in us. It's kind of a Chiron card. And I like it. In this deck you can see a very pompous frog sitting there like, nope, I'm guarding guarding my pepper mills. This is the pepper mills suit in this one, but it's wands. And the wands are about communication. So because we asked for what you can focus on, what this tells me is that you're over focusing on communication. And it's likely that you're looking for this fiery, passionate communication. It's not quite coming. And that is having you feel frustrated and putting you in this reverse king of swords energy. And probably them, too. Like, it could, it could be that because you are not focused on communication with them, that they're feeling a bit like a diva, even. And I know that if you are typically... Like, you know, if you are this empress and upright, you are typically that person that shines your fire, your bright light. You illuminate it on those that you really, really care about. And if you've been doing that and you notice that your person has been in a rather victim, zombie mode, narcissistic mode, and you withdrew that communication, then it's likely that they're feeling a bit challenged by that because they've been so used to being supported by that and that has enabled them to get away with the third party situation, with not doing their learning and growing and Spirit is clearly saying to both of you that it's time to work on your personal growth because otherwise these connections are going to get pulled away and for your person that's probably a really hard thing to feel. They might not even really be 100% sure what it is or why it is, but it's illuminating for them that they miss your connection. And we've got the Ten of Flamingos, which is the swords in this deck. I, I love it because swords can be such absurdity in the first place. Um, 
And this is usually the stabbed in the back card, but it's also a card of ascension. The character in it that is laying on the ground that is supposedly died is ascending to the next level because tens are the end of cycles in the tarot card. And so where we've got leading up to this, that's telling me that it's time to let go of the anxieties and the boundaries and the thoughts that got you into this situation. And if that means withdrawing some of your communication, withdrawing some of your loving motherly nature from this person who is not really seeing and appreciating it because they're feeling like a victim to the universe when they're not even really learning their lessons, let that go. Release that cycle. There's a reason why it is here in this order. Let those things go. You shouldn't be doing, like, no contact on somebody. Just find other things to focus on that bring you more joy than the, at the moment. If you're doing no contact with somebody, you're too wrapped up in old wounds. Let them go. Let them go. And let the, you know, and don't work to become empress and upright, but don't prioritize them anymore. You know, let just focus on your ten of pentacles right now. Because Wheel of Fortune here, that's divine timing. And we know with divine timing, <laughs> patience is required. It could be part of your learning lesson right now, even, is that patience. But not just patience, trust. With faith, there is no fear. And when you have faith in the universe, the universe shows you much faster. <laughs> it rewards you for that much faster. So, Taurus, what I'm seeing right now is that what's blocking you and your person is a victim mindset. Work on yours, heal yours, and they will heal theirs. And then just don't overgive of yourself. Give, in fact, mirror them a bit. Like, don't, you know, don't, don't drop down to their vibration. But if they're messaging you, only message them to the degree that they message you. Allow them to work for your attention a little bit, especially if you've been overgiving of yourself. Because when you do that and you don't get the reciprocity, you start to feel like that diva, that empress. And also if you have a, if, if your partner is in a third party karmic situation and you are focused on envy and jealousy of who they are with, what these cards suggest to me is that that situation is likely going to end on its own and it will end sooner if you interfere less. So focus on your, focus on your pentacles. All right, now. I'm going to get you, let's see, I'm going to do divine guidance cards. I made these in here, so these will be fun to do. We'll get some advice for you from the universe. All right, first, your divine counterpart is stuck in a karmic relationship they manifested. Withdraw your attention and light to help them learn and release their, karmic, their karma sooner. Say what was I just saying, right? Coming to an end. Focus on you for right now. We'll get... Two to three more for Taurus. Advice from Raven. The doors and gateways to portals that can take you to where your heart yearns are all around. Look with your heart to find them, not your eyes or ego mind. All right? Don't worry about the 3D right now. Trust in spirit. All right, can we do one to two more for Taurus, please? Oh, we'll take that one. Hmm. What you believe is always true. If you're unhappy, re-examine your beliefs to see how you can manifest happy vibes again. See, that's what I'm saying. We reflect each other. So if you think that they're being narcissistic, guess what? You are too. Maybe not to the degree that they are, but it's in there somewhere because we reflect our partners. If you really feel that they are your twin flame, your soulmate, whatever that they are your person, you are reflecting each other. So any judgment you lay on them, lay it on yourself. And then be grateful for them showing to you what is blocking your connection. It's funny, I have to see this on the bottom of this. Never allow yourself to settle for anyone who only changes last minute when you're ready to give up. That might be helpful to you too, Taurus. Alright, and then I made these cards. Message cards from your person. Let's see. Two to three messages, please, from Taurus's person. 
what do they have to say to them right now? Mid-May. Two, three, thank you, spirit. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, we had a bunch jump out, but only a couple of them are upright. So we'll take the one, well, we'll take, we'll take these two. So I've got, I'm pulling away to focus on our 5D relationship. Our 3D one hurts too much right now. And actually, that could be more from you. I feel you pulling away. It scares me. I'm not sure what to do. Isn't that funny that those came together? And I'm gonna. I, I'm actually gonna put this one over here. I think this is more from you. And this is from your person. So we'll pull two more from your. Or one to two more from your person. Thank you. One to two more for Taurus. This person. From them, <laughs> what would they like to say right now? Let's do this one. I see. I see through your masks, pride, and excuses. You can pretend to be a bad guy all you like. I know you're not. I know you're not. So, if you're trying to act like the bad guy right now, Taurus, they can see through it, and they feel you pulling away. And it could it could be that they recognize that you are typically, you know, empress upright and that they can tell that you're feeling hurt and you're withdrawing and that you don't want to, that you want to be there. I had two <laughs> that fell out while I was holding this. Let's see, we'll definitely take this one. I'm distant because I feel you're too good for me, but I'm inspired to become a better person because of you. I want you to be proud of me. All right. Let's see. <laughs> so I'm going to say, yeah, that this one was from you. And these three were from them. And let's do... I made these timing cards, too. So let's say when's the next, next time you are likely... Uh, to connect from this person with this person, whether that's them sending you a message or a phone call or coming to see you. All right, when is Taurus's person next likely to connect with them, or maybe when it's best for you to be able to reach out to them? Either or. When? Oh, all right. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we got two that popped out. We got spring, which is right now. <laughs> And when moon is waning, which is also now. So anytime, really. In fact, on the bottom of the deck, afternoon. So let's say that it's very likely at any time in the afternoon, your person will reach out to you or come see you. Or if you're really feeling called to reach out to them, make it the afternoon. All right. I think I can get away with giving you... I made these deck, this deck two cosmic advice. I'm going to pull one card for you, Taurus, uh, for what to work on. You know what? I think it's going to be this one. <laughs> advice from Capricorn. All work and no play is boring. Though all play and no work is limiting. Balance is key. Work hard, yes. Though be capricious, too. Have fun. Right? So yeah, work on your Ten of Pentacles right now, Taurus. It's a strength for your sign in the first place. And clearly, you working on that will help refocus this connection and get you back that fiery passion that you're looking for. Until then, work on you. Trust in spirit to do the rest. Alright, y'all. I'm going to do Gemini video next. So if you have sun, moon, rising, and Gemini, please check it out.